did you get my package? This is a gift from Ana Luisa to me to you. This is in honors of International Women's Day, so it's jewelry for powerful women in our lives. Ooh, you are my powerful woman. I'm your powerful woman. Ooh, HR ring. Oh wow! Can you hey, give us a close up? Oh my gosh! Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Let me see. Ooh. Wow! It's pretty. It's pretty. Yeah. Nice. Is that bracelet? Yes, it is. Oh my god! Second piece. Oh, I like it. Look at it. Yeah. Like even, the, even the bag is designed so good. It is. I like this. Oh my gosh! It's kind of like, uh, kind of like uh, oriental like uh, style. You know, it, it, the design is kind of like uh, so natural for us. You know. Thank you, Anna Louise. <laughs> Thank you, Anna Luisa, for sponsoring this video. I absolutely love their pieces. They are one, sustainable. They are 100% carbon neutral, meaning they offset all the carbon they produce. Two, they provide high quality pieces at low prices, starting at just $39. They even have a 365 day warranty. And three, they create their pieces in limited batches to ensure high quality and limit waste. If you are interested, Anna Luisa has so kindly shared a discount code. So if you use the code SarahWang10 in the link in my description box below, you can get 10% off. They offer speedy delivery all over the world. And you should definitely go check them out on Instagram and subscribe to their newsletter to learn more. Hello, if you are new here, my name is Sarah. I'm a hardware engineer at Microsoft. I live in Seattle. And in this video, I am picking up my puppy. This video was recorded the week of January 25th and now it's February 21st. So it's about a month down the line. I've already edited all the clips I took this week and I'm going to rewatch it and kind of walk you all through it. I meant to vlog the experience and walk you all through it live, but I was just so sleep deprived from taking care of a puppy that I didn't have the energy to talk to the camera. So I'm going to revisit it now and share everything that I've learned, what to expect your first week with a brand new puppy and reflect on the experience. It's going to be a good time. So this is the morning of, we woke up super early and we had to drive three hours to go see the puppy. I had already put a deposit down on the puppy at this point. Jewel and I were honestly exhausted driving these three hours. We drove it on a Monday. We had to be back before 3 p.m. so we could hop back online for work. I normally live in Seattle, but during this month, I was in Michigan visiting my family. So I got Otis in Michigan. This is Otis now, and he is almost four months old now. But in this video, he was just 10 weeks old. I was so excited when we first saw him. I remember seeing Otis for the first time. I saw photos and videos of him ahead of time, but they did not do him justice. I've been thinking about getting a dog for the past year, but I was still having conflicting thoughts about it. Even as I was driving to go see Otis for the first time, I felt really nervous because I didn't know what my life would be like after the pandemic. There was so much I didn't know about the future that I didn't know if I would be able to support a dog. But I think after a conversation with my mom, she really brought to light how she knows I've always been an animal lover. She knows I'm gonna have a dog in my life at some point, And there's really no better time to raise a puppy than now. And the future is also always unpredictable. So now that I have Otis, I really understand that I'm just gonna adapt my life however I need to take care of him because I love him so much. So yeah, it was definitely a very good choice and I'm very, very glad that I did officially get Otis. Do you want a little pad just in case you like, keys or food? Oh, that might be a good idea. Oh my gosh, he's actually so cute. He's cuter in person. Yeah. There's a little pad. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's a big pad. Um, I'll put it like on the ground here. On the drive back, I put a puppy pad on my lap just in case he would pee and poop. I have raised my family dog as a puppy before, so I kind of knew what to expect going in. I know he didn't have much bladder control. I don't think they get bladder control until like the 12 week mark. We did stop at one point to get gas and took him outside to see if he needed to go to the bathroom. We made it the whole way. He was honestly very calm. He just slept in my lap the whole time. When we finally got home, it was super exciting because it was yeah, time to introduce him to my family's dog, Sheldon. With well, Sheldon's a golden doodle. So he is a pretty big dog. He's actually a mini golden doodle, but 
He's about, I think, 45 pounds or so, so he didn't turn out that small. I really like big dogs, but in this phase of life, when I'm living in the city, living in apartments, and I'm traveling a lot, I decided that a small dog would better fit my lifestyle because you can take dogs that are under 25 pounds as a carry-on with you on the Delta airline at least. Honestly, Sheldon, our family dog, the Golden Doodle, he is the most gentle dog ever. So we didn't worry that much about what he would be like meeting Otis. Sheldon was actually kind of scared of Otis in the beginning. I think when he registered that another dog was entering the household, he came on guard a bit. But I read that it's actually a good thing to have an older dog. Put your new puppy in his place and show him who's boss, show him how to act. Otis was really excited to meet Sheldon, but Sheldon was a little bit more hesitant. Even looking back now, Otis has grown so much. Back in this video when we first got him, he was five pounds and now he is 6.6 .6 pounds. My family also has two cats, Vaughn and Lily. And they aren't the biggest fan of dogs, like they're amicable with Sheldon, but they don't hang out very much. So we wanted to really go slow with introducing Otis to the cat. Luckily, Otis wasn't super interested in the cats. The cats really like to keep their distance. So we just want to let that happen naturally. <laughs> Oh, I did have something in my pocket. Oh my gosh, you found it! My face mask! Otis definitely showed a few characteristics. One, he was very, very clingy. He didn't go anywhere where we didn't go. He followed us at our heels, which was honestly really helpful because we could always keep an eye on him. Whereas when we had Sheldon as a puppy, the golden doodle, he really liked to wander off on his own and explore. It was a little bit harder to keep track of him and make sure he wasn't getting himself into trouble. Number two, he was a little bitey, but he didn't have most of his teeth yet, so none of the bites hurt at all. And for puppies, my friend told me that they use their mouths to explore the world. And now that Otis has his teeth in, sometimes his bites hurt a little bit more. And she shared the advice with me that whenever they bite and it hurts a little bit, you're just gonna make it really audible that the bite hurt. And it actually really works. I think Otis understands that sometimes when he bites too hard, it hurts us and then he stops biting for a little while. But yeah, for the first night, we really just kept him by our side. Also another thing to note, we were in Michigan this first week and it was too cold for him outside for his size. Being outside for too long, the cold was dangerous. We started by training him on puppy pads and he was doing pretty good the first couple of days, but then he started to regress in progress and started peeing on the bench, peeing on the carpet, peeing everywhere. And we read that this is perfectly normal, especially when you have a change of environment for your puppy to regress in potty training process. It was definitely a little frustrating especially when you're sleep deprived it really tests your patience Jewel and I agree we didn't want to use any punishment we wanted to only use positive reinforcement which is what the articles we read recommend anyways too what we read was that if you punish your puppy too much for going to the bathroom then they're going to start to fear you and they're going to fear going to the bathroom in front of you which is really counterproductive to the process of potty training them another personality characteristic I noticed about Otis was he is super cuddly which is very different from Sheldon as a puppy Sheldon our family dog when he was a puppy he was very independent he likes to explore on his own he wasn't a big cuddler 
But Otis, he does not want to leave your side and he wants to crawl into your lap. He almost acts like a cat in that way. Like he's a huge lap dog. We also notice that he has huge bursts of energy. So most of the day he acts like a cat. He just wants to curl up in your lap and nap. But there are moments in the day where he just starts zooming all over the apartment in circles, running around you. And one, I think this is a common thing, is called the zoomies. <laughs> and two, it comes from his Bichon Freeze side. Apparently Bichon Freeze dogs get bursts of energy. But your name is Otis. Your name is Otis. Otis, Otis. Good morning, everybody. This is Otis. We're officially patenting the hood sling. Just kidding, we didn't come up with it. Strut one, two, three, four, five, six, strike a pose. <laughs> Walk back. Can you hit the wool? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's biting. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, Whoa. seven, eight. Oh. 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 Good job! Good boy. You got it. We also learned that he absolutely loved playing with a ping pong ball, which was perfect for him because it was small and it bounced around. He was so clingy to the point that he didn't even want to cross into another area without us. He gets scared. <laughs> it's okay, Otis. It's okay. You got it. As soon as the flooring changes, like from wood to carpet, or if there's a rug, he gets so scared to enter that space. Let's go get it. Go get the ball. Otis. Oh, that's where his food is. Put his food in there so that he can get used to the kennel. But also, so Sheldon over here can't steal his food. <laughs> oh! You okay? Ah, hi, baby. It's like 11 p.m. at night, and we don't have a crate for him yet because we're gonna go back to Seattle in a little over a week so we didn't want to buy one here and then have to buy another one in seattle so we have a makeshift crate that's right by our bed he's like literally sleeping right next to us it's like a little makeshift den area and he does this for a little while every night he'll whine and it's so hard to ignore him but i have to ignore him just let him get used to it and not let him sleep in the bed with us even though i want him to so bad he gets you can basically make it out I remember the first week, it was so hard to hear him whine while we were trying to crate train him and not just pick him up and put him on our bed, but we just had to ignore him. At the end of the week, he got used to it and he stopped whining after we put him in his crate for bed. He would get used to it. And now that we're living in Seattle, we actually got him a proper crate. We couldn't buy a proper crate in Michigan because we didn't have a way to bring it here to Seattle. But now in Seattle, we do have one. Since we got him comfortable with the carrier in Michigan and we got him comfortable with our makeshift crate in Michigan, it was really easy to transition him to a new crate. He did whine a little bit for the first couple of nights, but he got used to it very fast. We also got lucky with Otis. He didn't wake up in the middle of the night too much. There were definitely a couple of nights where he started whining at 4 a.m. and I had to go take him to the bathroom. Otis would go to the bathroom before bed and the next time he needed to go to the bathroom was like 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., which is not too bad. He did get us out of bed a lot earlier than I was used to, but I kind of wanted to get myself out of bed earlier in the morning in general anyways. So it helped me adjust my sleeping schedule. Now he's a bit older, he has a bit more bladder control. He typically wakes us up at 7 a.m. I'll take him on a walk, he'll go to the bathroom, and we go to bed around 11 p.m. It's so hard not to just scoop him up and put him in bed, but yeah, we're also really tired. It only took one escape out of his makeshift crate a poop on the floor putting him back in the crate reinforcing the hole that he found 20 minutes of whining and now he settled down and now it's time for us to sleep <laughs> the 
This is Puppy's first snow. We're gonna take him outside and bring him to snow, but only for a quick minute because we don't want him to get too cold. Ready for snow eyes? You ready? So small. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shannon's gonna show yeah. me how to look. Ooh. Yeah. <gasps> he loves it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you love the snow. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good boy. Good job. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Good oh, boy. yes, you did it. Be careful, Sheldon. Oh, you got your first snow play. Yes, you did. You did so good. <laughs> We also did get him a carrier because at the end of that week, we needed to fly back to Seattle, which is interesting. I'll also go through that a little bit later in this video. Honestly, one of the best things about getting a puppy is every experience becomes new again because you want to show him the snow, the beach, the park. And during a time like the pandemic where everything feels so repetitive, having Otis really brought a fresh perspective on everything because we'd go to the parks that we always went to, but it was so much more exciting because we got to see it through Otis's fresh eyes. Towards the end of the week, Otis and Sheldon got a lot closer. They started napping together, but still a little distance away from each other, like they weren't cuddling. And when we first left Michigan to come back to Seattle, Otis was definitely a little sad for a couple of days. And my mom reported to me that Sheldon was also a little sad back in Michigan and that he probably missed Otis, which was so cute. And then at the end of the week, we had to go fly back to Seattle. He still didn't have a few vaccines, but he wasn't old enough to get them. So I think as long as your dog is up to date on your vaccines, you would be good to travel. Although they never really checked, like they didn't ask for any proof of vaccines. We did pay the extra $125 fee to take him as a carry-on. And luckily during COVID, for Delta at least, they try to leave a seat empty between you and the next passenger. So Jewel and I were in the row. He was on the outside, I was on the inside. The middle seat was open and we got to put Otis's carrier on that seat. During takeoff and landing, Otis did have to be under the chair in front of us, kind of where you stow away your carry-on luggage. And I was so surprised how okay Otis was with- I was a little worried he would start barking and panicking as soon as we went out of sight, but he honestly slept through most of the flight. Whenever he woke up, we would take him to the airplane lavatory, pull down the baby changing station, put down a puppy pad, and just let him hang out there a little bit to see if he had to go to the bathroom. We also padded his carrier with puppy pads in case he went in there, but he was honestly very good about it. We even brought him out onto the seat for a little bit. One flight attendant said, it was okay and then another flight attendant came by and said that he had stayed in his carrier which is totally fair so we put him back as carrier and set his carrier down in the middle seat we also bought this travel food bowl which actually i have it attached to my bag here it just expands into a bowl but it also flattens down to store into your bag but yeah overall very very smooth trip and this was my first time flying with a dog, so I was very pleasantly surprised. And that's a really good sign because before COVID, I did travel a good amount for work. In the case that after COVID, I start traveling for work again, Julian's not living with me anymore, and I can't find a dog sitter, he can come with me if needed. An update since we've gotten back to Seattle, we've been trying to potty train him. We're living in an apartment, so we have this turf, this fake grass patch that we put out on our balcony, which I am so grateful we have a balcony because it'd be so difficult to take him out every hour while we're working from home. Both Julian and I have a lot of meetings. We're trying to train him to use his button to notify us whenever he has to go to the bathroom. He's not using the button yet, but he does go sit by the door when he has to go to the bathroom. He still makes mistakes about once a day where he'll go sit by the door and we might not notice him there. We might be in the middle of work, in the middle of a meeting, and then he'll just go inside the apartment. I think up until last week, it felt like we were just cleaning poop and pee all the time. It's also never his fault as a puppy. It's always our fault. We really struggled to be consistent with his schedule because of the nature of working from home and the meetings that we get pulled into. But we're doing a lot better job now and he has improved a lot in the past week. But yeah, that's my video on first week and a little bit beyond with Otis, a new puppy. 
and I hope this helps if you're interested in getting a new puppy or you just enjoy all the puppy clips. I'm honestly so glad that we got him. Like I was so conflicted for so long about getting a dog, but it was a great decision. He makes us laugh so much. He's so funny. He's so cute. Thank you all for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. Hit the subscribe button below for more. Also, if you're interested in those Ana Luisa jewelry pieces I mentioned earlier, check the description box for a discount code and link. Thank you so much. Bye.